Cool? OBS cool. live. Yeah, we're up. Yeah. Ew. The interweb is watching, Michael. Oh. Hello. You up? Y'all good? Turn your pedal up. your two-time President's Club Award winner. It's Pete Van Dyke, folks. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, Paul. Beautiful introduction. Happy, th happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I'm Pete Van Dyke. I'm host of Live from the Dutch Hall. We're really happy to have a great show for you here on Valentine's Day. We have uh, Shane Bergman here from the CFL Grey Cup champion, Calgary Sam Peters. Thank you, thank you. He's back again, creating quite a dynasty, and we're happy to have him as part of our show. He's one of our favorite guests. Hell yeah. But I have to get to a point before we start the show, and it's about Valentine's Day. And I want to say something. I'm offended by Valentine's Day at the very nature of the whole holiday. It, it bothers me to my core, not as a person, but as a comedian. As a comedian, as a comic, Valentine's Day is the one day of the year where they can f where bad jokes are allowed to fester, <laughs> you know? You know how you have to give, every when I was at the age where you had to give everyone in your class uh, a Valentine card. You couldn't just give it to your sweetheart. Probably back in uh, my uh, parents' generation, you just give it to the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. You would make a homemade card, dedicate the rest of your life to this person, start a family with someone in grade two. <laughs> That's what you do back in the old days. But now, but in my day, it was everybody. You don't want to let that one ugly kid with the birth defect or whatever uh, feel left out. So they said, everybody's got to get a valentine. So that's the area I grew up in. And when everyone got a valentine, there'd be a lot of awkward moments uh, between me, you and your buddies, you know? Like uh, charters would give me a valentine, you know, if it was saying, be mine or something. 
that's awfully uncomfortable for me, you know? It seems like a uh, gay, <laughs> for lack of a better word, right? <laughs> And then, uh, so what it would happen is Charles would want to give me one of those cards. He gives me one of the ones with, uh, with uh, uh, you know, a joke. But the problem is these aren't jokes. These are poor excuses for the jokes. I mean, the school system's allowing this to happen, you know? What did the stamp say to the envelope on Valentine's Day? I'm stuck on you? Oh. That's not a joke. How did the phone propose to his girlfriend? Okay. Gave her a ring. That's shit. <laughs> wow. oh, what's this? Uh, uh, what do you call a ghost true love? His ghoul friend? Ooh. That's not even a joke. <laughs> This is the only one that I think was a joke at all these things that I consider a joke. Like, this isn't a joke. How do owls declare their love? Owl will be yours. Boo! It's awful, right? Like These are the ones that will go on the Valentine. You'll get that, and you'll laugh at it because it's supposed to be a joke, you know? What is the best part about Valentine's Day? The day after when all the candy's on sale. That's a real joke. The truth. Yeah, Charlie should give me that Valentine's card. <laughs> well, anyways, people, it is Valentine's Day. Hug your people, hug, hug your loved ones tightly. We have a great guest tonight, and we also have uh, a great game to end the show, the newlywed game that we're going to yeah. do with some of the cast and uh, their spouses from our show. But uh, there's only one way to get started, and we got to recognize the greatest band Canadian late night history, the Nocturnal Misses. Let's hear it for the band, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> We are Michael Bo, our band leader on rhythm and vocals. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Beside him on lead guitar, that's Steve the Reluctant German. Hey. In the corner on the drums, that's our CRTC required Frenchman, the French tickler, Kev Belange, everybody. Bonjour. And in the corner, it's the balls of the nocturnal emissions, Whiskey West Higgins. Everybody, the Nocturnal Emissions! <laughs> How'd that feel, guys? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> Welcome to Live from the Dutch Hall. We are Canada's only late night uh, talk show and the greatest podcast to ever get started in a pool shed in Pine Grove, Ontario. Bar none! Yeah. Bar none. I think there is none close. The Adcox tried one, but we squashed it. Eh? <laughs> we weren't going to put up with it. Anyways, we got Shane Bergman back on our show today, and this is a great, great uh, uh, accomplishment. Last year, you didn't come on. I think you took a year off, or was it the year before? It might have been the year before. I thought I did come last year. Oh, yeah. La maybe. I, I only, maybe it was 15, 2015, I did not invite you back because you didn't make the Grey Cup. I was like, it. you know what, you have to be at the level oh. of Grey Cup. Well, <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not. This year. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. I'm honored. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe your, like, your success that you've had so well, far. It's you. fantastic. Thank you. And we've been so uh, fortunate to watch it and enjoy it because mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're one of us, you know, you're a yeah. Teeterville guy, you know, a Norfolk exactly. County guy. And uh, see you doing the big stuff, you know, it really makes us proud. So we're really happy to have you here, Shane. Now, I wanted to uh, uh, do one thing before. Um, oh, shit, what was the thing I wanted to do with you? Oh, I remember. I was going to do, uh, you know, um, 2015, we brought it up briefly, right? And now you've been in the, you've been in the CFL since, what, 2013? 13, yeah. Yeah, 2013. And then you went to the Grey Cup every year but that one. Right? No, 2013 and 15 we did not go. Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, but 14 you went. Yes. And then every year since then, you've gone except for 15. Correct. Right? Yes. Four of the last five years, you've been in the Grey Cup. Yep. And that one year, you did not go, right? Mm hmm And do you know why it is? I've, I've studied it. I've studied it to try to figure out why the Calgary Stampeders and all the other years, they were, they were uh, like the CFL-worthy team. Why that year did they not go? You want to know why? 
Can I tell you why? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to know what you think. Because I wasn't playing? Yes, it is. <laughs> you can't say that, but Levi Mitchell, right? No, that's right. No. He was in that game. He was. The one game you weren't in, yep. that's where it all went for shit. That's right. I guess it just worked out that way. Yeah, yeah. that's why they signed you again, <laughs> yeah, too, eh? Did you so. ever throw that in their face in the dressing room? I think my agent did uh, <laughs> negotiations this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a good man. That's the exact move you want to use. Yeah, exactly. If you want him to like, go down again in an injury, you'll be squat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shane Bergman's your whole team. <laughs> you got to have some strut around those guys just for that reason, you know? Yeah, I should. Yeah. I should, yeah. Fuck me, you can't let them have that on over top of you. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? We have a great show here today. I want to talk more with Shane Bergman. But before we do that, we have to do a segment of our show that we call Feedback. We got feedback. We got feedback. Welcome to Feedback. We got feedback. This week's segment is brought to you, as always, by our friends at Amazon. If you'd like to go to the Live from the Dutch Hall's website, that's livefromthedutchhall.com, you can click on our Amazon banners and do all of your shopping, and some of that money is going to come to us rather than go to the... Uh, uh, prick. Yeah, the bald guy that's, uh, that's taking pictures of his dick or whatever <laughs> he's doing, you know? <laughs> That guy gets nothing, we get money. That's like even better, right? Happy Valentine's. We're not going to spend the money on f photographing our penis, which I think is free nowadays, isn't it? So, Shane? I think so. How yeah. much does that cost? I don't know, as much as a phone. <laughs> <laughs> I like he doesn't deny that he's taking pictures of his dick. <laughs> Anyways, uh, and also, we want to talk about Norpac. The beef people. You just got to recognize them. They got the best beef. And they sponsor our show, so we got to be happy about it. Now, we ask our listeners each and every week for feedback. And they give it to us in different ways. This week, uh, we got some from Bruce Veltry on uh, live from the Dutch Hall at gmail.com. Bruce, uh, uh, Bruce has been a longtime listener of the show. And he says, I tune in every week for the comedy and the friendly banter, but I also learn new words and improve my vocabulary. <laughs> Death pool episode was no exception. Today I will try to fit Spazitron into as many <laughs> conversations as I can. Thanks to Dutch Hall. Love Bruce. That's Dr. Bruce. Bruce. We taught Dr. Bruce shit. That's you're, a doctor, my mother. You know? You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, Bruce. You can go to a medical school or wherever you went to get that doctor. You ain't going to learn Spazitron there. You're going to learn that from our program. And you know where I learned it from? SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> He's on the Super Bowl. He's got to be good. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird, eh? It's super weird. Yeah. I don't understand. Like, they're just trying to make everyone happy. Is that what it is? Yeah. Super Bowl stuff? Like to, it was them? just all weird. Yeah. Why would you book Maroon 5, then, if you're trying to make people happy? <laughs> there's, there's no answer. Like, who that. fucking watches football, you know? <laughs> who played the Great Cup this year, Shane? The Great Cup? Yeah. Uh, Calgary and Ottawa. No, 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 oh, no, no, no. The halftime show? Yeah, yeah. Was it Art Kells? I don't remember. Was it Art Kells? I'm just no. taking a guess. Oh, you were actually probably worried about the game? Yeah, I was going <laughs> to enjoy this show. I was going <laughs> to Fuck that Teeterville band. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we got another piece of uh, feedback. This one's from another uh, super fan, Sean Dulster. Oh. Sean Dulster, hot off of Life from the Dutch, gmail.com. He says, Pope Peter, having a hard time coping with the new look of the Dutch Hall just because I was a big fan of the old pool shed. I am adjusting. Uh, though to all, uh, all the hard work is looking great. Just a few things I'd like to mention. Boy. Uh, most nocturnal emissions happen when lying down, but your nocturnal emissions never sounded or looked better standing up. Fair Ooh. enough. Eh? Fair enough. And I can't talk about how great that was to watch evolve. Like when Michael first stood up, 
It was like watching your baby take his first steps. It was so beautiful to watch. And then all of a sudden, Steven's standing up. And then all of a sudden, I think Kevin stood up. The drummer yeah, he stood was up. Standing up as well. yep. And he was just like, I want a piece of this shit, you know? <laughs> and then uh, Wes was up. And then last up, Charters, eh? Old yep. Rooster. Nailed to the ground. And that's why he wasn't invited back this week. Was not <laughs> invited back. Last one up is out this yeah. week. Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're not back, because you sat down to the end, Charters. <laughs> Anyways, uh, number two, uh. more cameras. The long shots of you and the crew are hard to see. We want to see you, the band, and Paul Slitz. <laughs> <laughs> so we do have to... That's a good point. That's a good point. Number three, you have not made Paul paint the start time of Live from the Dutch Hall on the spiky ball clock tower yet. Paul, you will do that. You're going to scale up that thing, right? Oh, yeah. No yes. Problem. Scale. And, uh, but the only problem is we don't know when we start. Yeah, exactly. Eh? <laughs> we, uh, just we, a question mark. That's fine. Yeah, we just have to paint a question mark on the sign. He goes, cheers from Sean Dulster. P.S. Fuck Charters, the baby foot eater. <laughs> and that is a real listener. And Charters, you know, I wish he was here for me to show my disappointment in his choices in life. Because that is creepy. <laughs> Only a couple more people to, cho uh, to uh, check with, and those are our good friends that, that are like our super, super fans. The one of them is the cheese lady. We should check on her, eh? Yeah, we Teresa. Hey. Hey, at the Second Mouse in Delhi, if you're looking for cheese, you should go to the Second Mouse in Delhi. It's the greatest place to get cheese. And a good listener of our show, and I, and I would call her a sponsor and a friend, that's uh, Teresa from the Second Mouse there, that we, the cheese lady. She gives us feedback each and every week. And she does it on Podbean. Podbean. And she says uh, this week, L M A O, or there's an F in there, yep. right? L M F A O, paint naked paintball. Just keep in mind, I have a great aim with a gun, no matter how small the target. Ha 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 ha. talk. And then she went on to say, I have a feeling on one of your blind dates, I'll wish I was blind, and I'm still in. <laughs> Or I'm still game, she says. We are going to put uh, Teresa in a game, uh, uh, in a dating game situation. We are in the process of planning it. It is a big ordeal, Teresa. We want to make sure we have a, a proper date plan for you. And we want three suitable bachelors right. that are going to show up. They're going to make it not only uh, an interesting experience for you, Teresa, but hey, back. Hey, quiet out there, back. Or you gotta go wait in the car. Rowdy. Huh? Rowdy. Yeah, they can't even stay quiet till their segment, eh? Those ladies, eh? The spotlight's gone to their head. They're fired up. <laughs> Anyways, we got, uh, I have a feeling, uh, so she's, we're gonna do this blind date for her. And I'll tell you, Teresa, you're gonna hate every minute of it. <laughs> you're gonna root the day you agree to this thing, and it's a bad decision. I'm put her front and center. We are going to make it uncomfortable in every way. <laughs> but you brought it on yourself, Teresa. You made this idea up yourself. <laughs> and you know we don't have any friends that are good people. And we You've heard our show. <laughs> Everyone we've had on is a degenerate of some sort. Except for, um, what? Who? Six. Yeah. We get a heckler. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time we've had one, and it's crazy. I like it, actually, a little bit. Okay, we got to talk to the Haitian Dwarf. He's been with us since the very first week, and we have to get... And he gave us some feedback this week. Uh, I snuck one in, Steve. I got it. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off the bed we go. Your pussy farts. 
Smells so like sweet tarts. Hi ho, hi ho. Well, the Haitian dwarf gives us feedback on iTunes. <laughs> iTunes. I like how we wrote. Uh, your pussy farts smell like sweet tarts. On the day that my in-laws decide to come to the program, we decide to go, your pussy farts smell like sweet tarts. Make it clear. Hi-ho. So the Haitian Dwarf every week gives us uh, feedback on iTunes. This week he entitles it Happy Valentine's Day, and he gives us five stars. In my country, we celebrate on March 14th with a giant steak. Does anyone know what that means? Nope. What does it mean? <laughs> Do you know what it means, Wes? Steak and blowjob day. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? Steak and blowjob day is March 14th? Yes. What's, uh, Great day. what's uh, March, or what's April, no, not April 20th. What's the, what's the Jim Jeffries blowjob, or uh, anal sex day? <laughs> is it on March 20th or something? And it was, because I saw people at the Jim Jeffries concert, they had t-shirts saying like that day, like uh, anal day? April 18th or whatever. It's like <laughs> anal day or whatever, once a year. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you, Station Dwarf. If you guys would like to give us feedback in the future, you can do it on iTunes. You can do it on the Podbean. You can do it on uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or uh, just live from the Dutch Hall, gmail.com. You can also send me a smoke signal, shout out your window. You can just come over and tap me on the shoulder. Those are all ways to give me feedback. And they're all appreciated. Actually, my brother's wife, I just want to mention it. My brother's wife, Paul, your wife, uh, Krista, she gave a piece of feedback this week about the Pete Burns' Bridges episode. She said that uh, she loved it. She loved it that I was just telling everybody in my uh, career that I had built a reputation okay. with to go fuck themselves. I think that's how she feels. Yes. There's also one local gentleman who will be having a conversation with me in the future. <laughs> <laughs> that's good fun. That is good fun. That is good fun. That's all I, good fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that's going to get back to him because some of his buddies listen to this show. And I know it's going to get back to him, and I don't care. No. I stand by every word of what I said. <laughs> every word of it. Makes it even better. I can't wait till I have the confrontation with the gentleman so that I can actually uh, talk about it on the show. Yeah. It's going to be so much more fun. He did really screw me over when I was 30, I'll tell you that right now. It made me look like a jackass when I went to uh, that's, uh, that's why uh, you yeah. stated your feelings. Yeah. You know what? Ever heard the expression, revenge is a dish well served cold? I have. I just fed it to that CIBC <laughs> gentleman. I tell you that. I tell you Ice that. cold. Ice cold. He probably forgot about that. I didn't, Michael. Anyways, we have to get to our show. We have a great one today. Like I said before, Shane, how many times? You've probably been on three, four times now. I think four. This Ooh, is the fourth so time on our show. Great. He is not only a one-time Great Cup champion, one but he is also a two-time. Two Grey Cup champion. Yeah. That must feel pretty good. Yeah, Shane Bergman, great. everybody. Let's hear it for him right here. Thank you. Shane, I have to tell you, two-time Grey Cup champion. <laughs> and uh, this must feel good. You've been walking around staying pretty tall mm -hmm. since you won the uh, championship, of course, right? Yep. Yeah, you feel, like, good about it, right? I feel pretty good, yeah. And i got to ask you one question. I've heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true. Okay. Is a great cup in your trunk right now? No, I wish. Damn. It is not. A great spot to bring it. I oh, wish. There was chatter. Oh, yeah. No. There was chatter. There was chatter online, believe it or not. Oh, really? Because you have a function coming up where you're going to get to. Is it this weekend? It's Monday. Family Day Monday. Family Day Monday? Yeah. So you can go to Teeterville? Yeah, at the fire hall from 10 till 2. Yeah. And you can uh, you can get your picture taken with a great cup. Great cup uh, of cards would be pizza, hot dogs, drinks, coffee. Will you uh, sign an autograph? I will. I'll sign lots. How of much for a kid if they want to uh, sign an autograph? For how much do I charge? Yeah, yeah. Two hundred. <laughs> no, it's completely free. I even bought pictures for everyone to give to them. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Two hundred. Yeah. I like. I would like it if you just sat in like a raised platform and then made it that like you are the greatest of Teeterville that yeah. has ever come out. Of and then I have my stamp for my signature. <laughs> yeah. Stamp every time. Yeah. Mm. And don't look at me in the eye, kid. Don't look yeah. at me in the eye, you know? Yeah. I'm a two-time Great Cup champion. <laughs> Anyways, uh, 
I understand you're uh, feeling pretty good about yourself, Shane, because I, too, am a two-time champion. Two-time. <laughs> Two times I won uh, the President's Club Award. I don't know if you know that. No. <laughs> wow. You ever look at these two puppies right here? Very impressive. That is awesome. They are impressive. If you look yes. at those things, those are President Club Awards 2008 2009, back to back, baby. Back to back. <laughs> wow. Now, I carry these things around wherever I go <laughs> because I want people to know my accomplishments in life. You are a two time Great Cup champion. Where are your Great Cups? <laughs> There's only one great cup. I do have one <laughs> ring right now, but I did not bring it. I was thinking about bringing it. I should have brought it because that would have been funny for that bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. especially <laughs> that too. And you can put yeah. it on your middle finger. <laughs> yeah, and then you just shove it right up my uh, butt behind, right? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, but you have one ring and the other one's still coming, right? Yeah, it comes right before we uh, go back to camp, so like end of May. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Oh, so. Right before, like, you'll get it, like, when you go, you go back, or it sends to your house? No, we'll go back, we'll have a ring ceremony, so pretty much everyone who's on the team last year who was available to make it will go and have dinner and watch the owners come and give us a ring, so it's kind of neat. Ugh, yeah. that sounds gross, eh, watching the owners come? Little... Oh, <laughs> think of that. <laughs> and so, anyways, whatever you guys do in Calgary, I'm not against it, it's a different era, hey, but we gotta, out, I have to say, <laughs> though, <Show me. laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you mean. I'm sorry. Um, so um, I wanted to say, though, you, that you've had a real, like, pretty much, a, I would say it's a, a blessed career, really. You yeah. played a lot of football in your career, like, yeah, as far yeah. as being there in the end game mm -hmm. more than you haven't been. Yep. And you've won two in, in your uh, career, and you've just re-signed. Yes. So now this is all must have exceeded your expectations of what you thought you could accomplish in football. Well, especially when I started. When I started, I didn't even think I was going to make the team. Yeah, yeah. And now maybe going into my seventh year, signed my technically my third contract and uh, two Grey Cups, four Grey Cup appearances. And, like, you know, it's kind of crazy to say being around here and stuff and being able to do that. Do you feel so, like a veteran now? Yeah, I feel like a veteran for sure. I, uh, I definitely on the O-line because I'm the, now the oldest O-line. Oh, most, yeah. Yeah, on the team because our one guy who has been there for nine years, he just got signed with Montreal. Uh, and he was on the team for eight or yeah, eight or nine years, and I'll be going on my seven. So now I'm taking over his most veteran. I never thought I'd be able to say that on a pro, pro, pro football team for yeah. sure. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that really does say a lot, though, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. it means that you have that longevity and you've done all the right things to stay that way. Yeah, for sure. Now, do you also think last time I talked to you, I think the most fascinating thing I learned about you was that because you're a giant person, right? <clears throat> And like, if you were like in the olden day CFL, like where you wore like a leather helmet, and you know, mm -hmm. those kind of people, like just being your size would be enough. Probably. You could just eat chicken wings and drink beer and never, smoke cigarettes. Yeah, and smoke yeah. cigarettes. Never have to worry about any sort of like uh, rigorous training, right? No. But no. last time I talked to you, you said you were like juggling medicine balls blindfolded yeah. on an exercise ball or something like that? Yeah, with my eyes closed, juggle. Well, I don't juggle. Yeah. I bounce them off a little trampoline oh, with my right. eyes closed. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm standing on an exercise ball with my eyes closed, and I bounce two medicine balls off a little trampoline. Oh, just for that, time. eh? <laughs> yeah. How the fuck I can't juggle that? at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, if you, like normally, but. just being a giant was enough. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't have to be able to do that extra tricks, but now you have to like... In the, to be in the CFL, you got to be on the top of your game because you got yeah. these other guys that are doing these things that are coming at you, right? Yeah, exactly. They're, these guys are trying to make a living and trying to fed for their family, so they do everything they can to beat you to try to stay on the team, right? And everyone wants to get championships, so everyone gives you their best all the time. So, And it's not like it's big going on big all the time. I play guys that are like 260 pounds, which I'm like 60, 70 pounds heavier than. Yeah. So I got to be able to move too. Yeah, I just yeah. go around me. So yeah, 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 yeah. That's like what that kind of training training's for, a little quickness, quickness training. So. Yeah, it's not yeah. all about size, is it? No, not yeah, all about yeah. size and strength. It's about technique, it's, quickness, footwork. Yeah, yeah. yeah, stuff like that. So. And that's amazing, like, the amount of, the amount of work, because I, I never would have considered, like, how, how much, how committed you have to be in order to get to that level, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, for you, do you think, like, growing up on a tobacco farm would have helped you, like, for just like understanding that you, this is a possibility or, you know what I mean? Like, well, the reason why I knew it was going to be a possibility is because my dad made it. Like I worked hard on the farm, but like my dad made it, made me able to be able to play 
So, oh. like, I watched him work twice as hard so I could play. Oh. So that's where I kind of get it from. So instead of, like, hey, instead of, you know, instead of replanting tobacco, it's like, Shane, take the day off and train, stretch whatever you need to do, get ready for your next training session, football session, whatever you're doing. Yeah. And, you know, watching him going out and work, like I said, twice as hard so I could be able to do all that and he could still feed me, pay for my training sessions and all that stuff, you know. Made yeah. you want to work hard, Yeah, too, made me want to work harder and be yeah. the best I could be because he's doing that for me, so why not do something for him? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's nice, Shane. Yeah, You're a good exactly. guy, eh? That's why we keep having like him it. back, eh, Mike? Awesome. Yeah. I feel like it. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Not everyone's degenerates on your show. <laughs> no, you've been the best guest. <laughs> uh, the other day, who else did we have? We had another one that isn't a degenerate? Just Shane, no, just right? Shane. Just Shane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the one nice guy we've had on our show. Yeah. <laughs> and it has been really nice. Anyways, uh, I can't believe it. We got you in good timing then because we can fill that Teeterville Fire Hall, I'll tell you that. Yeah, everyone's welcome. Yeah. I hope everyone comes out. It'd be great awesome. to see everybody. Can you put a baby in the gray cup and take a picture of your baby we, in the gray cup? Yes, we've done that. Yeah? Yep, we can. Do you get to party with the gray cup? I do. I'm having an event. It's invite only at my place uh, after. But I'm it's, not asking. Yeah, but that's going to be fun. I'm really but excited. But you told me where it was, so I can still hide out and just watch it in the yeah, bushes. Um, if you find my house, Tiro's not that big. I know where it is. You told me where it is. I'm not going to say it on air. <laughs> yeah. But I know where it is. I could you know be where there. it is? Come down. Just look for the ember of a cigarette in the bushes. <laughs> In the late evening, that, that'll be me. Be just watching. Drink, drink out of that thing after. It'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Are you? Would you drink? You drink out of the gray cup? Yeah, I, I lice all first. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I make sure it's clean. Yeah, oh, yeah. Last time, four years ago, I had the gray cup, and by the end, so I brought the Swazis, and by oh, the end, everyone beer. was drinking out of it, and it smelled like an infection. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my wife's best friend, mother, took a drink out of it, sick for a month. Couldn't, like, breathe, had to wear a mask, like, couldn't infect other people, like, oh. really bad stuff. And I was, oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, that, and that smell was right. It was an infection. So, <laughs> so what, extra that, Lysol this time. It got kind of gross. Yeah. Yep. That's why I only drink out of church chalices, because and only you can't, can't get sick from it, because it's been you. blessed by God. Oh, what? true. And only you. Oh, yeah, and only me. I only yeah. use this. Yeah. But I think pewter, and, like, when you're doing something, when you're drinking, the like, something out of, like, uh, this isn't the blood of Christ. It's uh, um, vodka soda, to be quite honest. <laughs> but it's close, and uh, <laughs> and I know that I'm only drinking out of it. But if me and you drank out of that, Shane, I think we'd be okay. So look, he split as long as we split the sides, right? Yeah, I think we'd be fine. Well, then what I'm going to do when I come to your party, uh, crash your party on the weekend, is I'm going to draw with a magic marker on the great cup just a little bit where my mouth will go. Okay. And I'll write with it on a, with a Sharpie, say, Pete's Mouth Place or whatever. And then that's where uh, only I'll drink that night. Okay, that's fine. Hey, that'd be cool if it was there forever, right? Eh? It would be. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably getting in trouble. <laughs> it would Does be there a guy that handles it, like the Stanley no, Cup? No, no, no. You, we don't have that kind of money. They just hand over the keys to you? <laughs> yes, give it to me. Oh, man, this I think, it, the I best. think it might be a replica. I'm not 100% sure. It's not... I think there's one that stays in the Hall of Fame, and there's one that they give to us that we can do what we want with. Oh, they so. don't even give you the real one. They let you get go. No. That's the same with the Stanley Cup, too. Yeah. Hey, they have a whole bunch of them. They don't mm -hmm. let you know how many they got. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so how okay. do you get it, then, Shane? Do they just, like, ship it to you? Or yeah, so actually. Pick it up at the airport? Pretty much. Yeah. No, there's a coach that lives in Hamilton, and he's coming to party with it on Sunday. And uh, I pick it up Monday morning from him. And oh, then, cool. Yeah, and then Tuesday morning, I bring it back to Hamilton for another guy who's from Hamilton. Then he gets it. And oh, it just yeah. goes around and ends up going to Toronto, then Quebec. Do you see how that all works? <laughs> it's just a bunch of guys working it out, probably texting. Oh, I'll give it to him, and then he'll give it yeah. to him. It's just oh. like a bunch of dudes. This is what the, the CFL is like. That's what I like about it so much. They are just like... You're like a, oh, it's a work in Joe's, but you're playing sports yeah, at a exactly. high level, right? You know yeah, what I mean? That's true. Actually, I have all it's the text the messages most... on my phone figuring that out. <laughs> yeah. That's true, completely right. Yeah, it is yeah. the most, like, regular sports thing that I've, I've come into contact with. Interviews and sports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're also, like, uh, like you said, like, they'll just... I know we talk about this every time you're in. What do you do in Ontario? The specialness of the CFL. Did you find that growing up? Uh, not really. Hamilton fans. Oh, okay. You.
parts of town to like somebody that they don't care what you do and then there's a bunch of like locals who are like uh, really anyway because they're girls like our flies or whatever mm -hmm. and they want to watch hockey and talk to their other drunk buddies and they don't want to listen to talk to their dicks. And those people then like sit and hate you like, like all the time no matter what you say right mm -hmm. and uh, that makes you like stronger as a comic because you have to come up with a good joke sure. and build guys mm -hmm. but uh, otherwise uh, they're going to uh, stab you with a broken beer long neck. <laughs> but sometimes you do say offensive things because you're trying to find the funny in it, and then, uh, and then you get you. I kid you, right? So then those sorts of things are real problems that you can face in a night. Like I've seen, like, sweet, sweet people. Uh, like, like, threatened or, or almost attacked. One of, my, one of the guys I'd call punch the face and uh he's a, he's not even offensive at all he's a super nice guy I like a fan or someone in the fan or whatever uh someone in the audience yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this was after the show and once we were, uh, we were out, i was on stage so i didn't get to be in the fight but there was this guy uh and apparently he was in jail some guy did like a rape joke and uh this guy that was in jail like had uh, some bad times there you know and so I brought back memories, and then he was really upset about the rape joke. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so then he made a big deal about it, and then it got into a fist fight out in the streets east of Adelaide. And then, uh, then uh, uh, I was on stage, so I never got to see what happened. Oh, really? But it was, uh, I was playing a fight at that time, because yeah, everybody was not watching fight. the fight, because yeah. it was way more entertaining <laughs> than I was talking about my dick. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Shane... You've been through now four great cups. Yeah. So the first one in 2014, we talked about that in a previous episode. That one was, you're, you were kind of like almost a rookie. You know, I know you had one game in the year before, but you almost a rookie. You made it to the mountaintop in your first, first like, real season. Ever, yeah. and, and you must have the expectation that this is the way it is, right? Kind of? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. The last few years, and now, like, uh, except for the one time when your mm -hmm. team, when you let your team in there with your injury, exactly, yeah, because you AC. couldn't carry them all on your shoulders. Correct, AC But in the next three years straight, you made it to the Grey Cup. Yep. Two years losses. Yeah. 
one year, then redemption. Yes. So, like, how hungry in the third year after like, the two disappointing losses, one to Toronto, right? Uh, we lost uh, the first one, Ottawa in Toronto, and then we lost to Toronto in Ottawa. Oh, right. Yeah. And uh, so this year, get another chance at Ottawa. It has to be, like, you must have been really excited to get another crack at them. Yeah, I was excited for sure. And, like, to be able to pull it off, this is like a, this is like a, a real Rudy story. This is like a redemption <laughs> thing. Like, you guys, this is the same guys who, like, uh, who, who, like, gave you the bitter defeat last year. You still have the taste in your mouth, and you go and you shove it right up their ass, right? Yeah. That, that's got to be a totally different experience. Because you have no, now you have you have like three great cups under your belt already. Mm -hmm. You uh, you have two losses following up. You're running the risk of being the new Buffalo Bills yeah. of the NFL, yep. Yep. right? That. And then so in that game, you, there's no motivation needed. You guys got all got to be up for that, right? Yeah, there was no motivation needed. But we had came down. To, like, we had to learn our mistakes. Our first loss to Ottawa, and then we. I have a funny tweet where we did we did kick Toronto's butt. But we lost on a few plays that people can argue with me on that, but yeah. like, we didn't play very good for like six plays or seven plays and win the game. And then, so we just needed to make change those like, six plays. Like, six plays change that game and like we balled out. Wait, we play good quarterback for me, and that field was a sheet of ice, and uh, like our defense like balled out and. No one made the little mistakes. Everyone played pretty much perfect. So. And, and, and do you think that the uh, I don't I hate to say this, but like do you think that, that the loss were the, were, were what like do you think that they were a blessing in disguise? Uh, as a as, uh, for your whole a, the team that was there on that day, having those two losses had to make you better prepared uh, for that game than not having those two losses, right? That made you better prepared, definitely. But it was more of a motivator. Like it within me, it didn't have any like competitive journey. You were hard, like I did. I might have changed a couple of things that the year prior. Otherwise, it's just a huge motivator. Like we need to get this win. We need to get this win. And like, but otherwise, okay, but like yeah. in this way though, if you were like, uh, if you if you would have a one, if you had four great cups right now, mm -hmm. would you be? player as you are having only two. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You would be. Oh, yeah. But you wouldn't have had those failures to make you yourself better. You, you would have thought you're good. No matter what. I know. I bet you are better because you have those two losses. That's I, I know how to deal with loss better. I think you Like riding high, thinking your yeah. fucking shit don't stink, right? Yeah, that's true. Just like this year, Shane. I'm just kidding. With <laughs> but everyone, the judge champ. When the judge, people are the judge champ. So yeah, yeah. Like every yeah, yeah. Yeah. How many championships do you have? Championship. Yeah, that's true. So. I guess so. Like it's not about wins and losses, it's about how you bring the the end goals of the championship. So yeah. if, if you have the most, of those you win. We did. Mm -hmm. That's good. You got yeah, that. really excited. Yeah. So like you, you've really kind of built a dynasty there in uh, Calgary. Like you must feel like you have a core of guys now that have like been there for a while. Or yeah. How, I mean, how big of a group have you been there the whole time with you? Like for the past six years, there've been at least ten guys, twelve guys that have been together. Left. Maybe even like fifty. Yeah. This year, different. This year, we do not have all those guys back. This is the biggest free agency you've ever seen. Oh, really? So, so you and uh, I believe I we're back. Our whole line's back except for our starting right tackle, so we solidified that. And we've solidified, solidified our quarterback. But I mean, in our defense, but otherwise, our defense is pretty much on. Oh, yeah, okay. Two DBs back. And oh, yeah. They're really good players, which, thankfully, but uh, yeah. everyone else is going like a Systems, the coaching, there were the hundred percent. It's the culture, the coaching. Yeah, hundred percent. They treat you like both, which is nice. I hear people they treat people like number number one, two, or you know, they like person and uh, our coach. Uh, they drafted me six overall, or not so six rounds. Sorry, like I forget which which overall six rounds, and uh, you know, people usually don't play. 
say seven years ago. Yeah, yeah. So they're really are. judging talents. Guy in, some money, build him up for three, four years, and all of a sudden, four years down the road, you'll see he got contract in Calgary. And yeah. just like Calgary's been for years, and he's kind of like the Patriots that way. Yeah. Your core set, like, keep on breaking. And he made a message to the whole thing. But yeah, and uh, but I would say that, uh, like, you, you only played him, right? And uh, it's kind of nice, like, because you're like, you're like, like, go say one game for your rarity in sport. Like, that is real rare in sport. So, like, even just go this long with one friend, you know, if you make the Hall of Fame now, you know what it's just. Yep. No matter what, you got this much of your career into yeah. Calgary. What's the dish that I think before I clean them? Get all of your hands out. Nail it? The same with Bill. That's my point. Kelly and Michael. That's one thing that you do, right? 
What is the one thing? Yeah. What is the one thing that she does? To leave sharp not in the sink. Oh. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, what's the answer? You move my shit yeah. <laughs> yeah. Move my shit around. Move my shit around. Oh, no point for that one. <laughs> Alicia. <laughs> Don't take time for myself. Next week, Wes. <laughs> Is it like an ashy color? I guess. <laughs> Nothing at all. Oh, it's a close one. It is close. He dismissed the, the uh, emasculated uh, service and such. Wes, if your wife were to. Oh, no, sorry. Wes, when, uh, we asked Wes when your lady was getting dressed in the morning, which one of her outfits do you hope she's putting on? What did Wes say, Alicia? What did he say? Is there a bomb coming? I'll stick my fingers. It's Valentine's Day. Scrubs. Blue. Scrubs. Can you imagine my call? But I absolutely forget. What does he hope that you're putting on? I'm going to say, like, like gym clothes, like workout clothes. Ah, uh, workout oh. clothes, Mike. What did you say? Oh, good answer. I went with, uh, Roblox teacher. Yeah, something sexy about a girl in your picture. Oh, we're going to do another one for the man. Michael, let's, uh, let's see if we'll keep this thing going. Maybe she can get it back. Kelly, if you were describing Mike as a superhero, who would he be? Superman? Uh, not Superman. I went with the green guy. <laughs> oh, oh, the Hulk. Oh, uh, uh, or Leo, what superhero would Steve be? None. <laughs> the non superhero. Yeah, maybe that's not the answer. You think he's non? Uh, I think I have you in mind. I said Superman because Lame. He did say the lame man, doesn't it? <laughs> Which is not hard to point because both agree Steve's no superhero. Right. <laughs> Fair enough. Alicia, what, did Wes, what would you say Wes was if you had to become a superhero? Who would he be? Iron Man. Oh, so close. Who'd you guess, Wes? <laughs> Spider Man. So it's written. Something of mine that you would not throw. I would. You would want to throw this one thing away. 
way, your clean up closet, one of your things you want to get rid of, what is it? You may have answered all this to the because of the hurt. Well, then I know that. No, I know that. You wouldn't throw away a concert t shirt. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Oh, 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 come on. on. Five points tie game now. Uh, Wes, Ori, uh, uh, Leah. Or, uh, <laughs> Uh, what, what what would you throw away of Wes's from his closet? Jeez. Ask what, what? Oh, sorry. I asked. So Wes, sorry. I apologize. What did he say? She throw away the one. Thing. What did he say she throw away her hammer? All right. Torn jeans. Torn jeans. Old. Shoes, old shoes. This is part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Michael and Kelly. What did Kelly say she's going to throw up? I'm going to have to put me through the gear on this lately. With, uh, this, this, no, it's a problem. She's into this. Uh, Marie <laughs> Conner, whatever her name is, thing. So, what would you have me throw out? Well, I was going to go with this uh, shirt, but I didn't throw it out. I will. But I got Nashville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What'd you throw that out? That's, that's one of my favorites. Just a t shirt. Wow, come on. Regular judges. A t -shirt. Specific t shirt and generic. What? I think that counts point. Hey! Ten five. Five. Ten five. He has more t shirts than anyone I've ever met. <laughs> All right, we're going to go. We're going to get this thing wrong. You guys got to go on. We'll stay with you. What uh, did Kelly say was the one material thing that man owns that means the most to him? The material thing that means the most to me. Ooh. My guitar? Your guitar, is that right, Kelly? Yeah. That's hey! Oh my goodness. Wow. He's opening up a little pass on yeah. you guys. Wes? Wes? What did yes. uh, you just say is your one material thing that means the most to you? I also say guitars. All guitars. Yes. Wes is on the board. Nice. Wes. And now we're going to uh, Leah and uh, Steve. Steve, what did Leah say is uh, the one thing that means the most to you? Material thing. It's easy. It's my computer. Really? No. Oh. <laughs> guitars. Ah. Uh, everyone's <laughs> guitars and Steve's computers. No, Steve, that's really lame. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> really lame. This one, uh, it's going to be an easy one. Let's see if we need a tiebreaker. We asked ladies, oh, sorry, we asked the men, what would your ladies say is the first thing that your man does when he wakes up in the morning? We're going to start this with Alicia and Wes. What is the first thing that Wes does when he wakes up in the morning? Four West. It'll be number four. Kiss. <laughs> the first thing you do is kiss. Wes, is that right? Far. He <laughs> says. <laughs> far. <laughs> it's far. Kiss. Far. <laughs> Steve and Leah. Uh, question number four. What is the <laughs> First thing that uh, Steve does when he wakes up in the morning, Leah? Goes back to sleep. <laughs> Goes back to sleep. <laughs> Steve, what did you say? Not before I pee. Oh. He pees. Uh, yes. This is it. You guys have already got the victory. Can you, uh, can you uh, stretch 
pass this out for the clean flow prize pack. Nice. Oh yeah, from the merch cabinet and afterwards, it's gonna be a shopping spree wow. for you, but can you just break this open and show these people that you are the super couple of the hot teens? If I get this wrong, then he's lying. It's, he farts. Oh. You're lying that was then. my second answer, honey. You are, he went I went pissed. with this as well. First. It was fart and piss. I should have went with fart. Yeah, uh, I know, it was a real, it was a real struggle for <laughs> it was. You saw the struggle you had. Like, it's... What is it, piss or fart? You could not <laughs> determine. Either way, I'm head of the back. <laughs> Anyways, everybody, this has been live from the Dutch Hall. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Happy Valentine's Day. We'd like to thank our guests again, Shane Bergman, for coming and joining us today. We'd like to thank Nocturnal Mrs. for being the great man in Canadian Life and History, and we'd like to thank every one of you for listening. So until next week, let's see you. We want to go back and play the sure. instrument, Michael? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> until next week, we will see you and T. See you next Thursday.